It was 2014. It was the 70th anniversary of the D-Day invasion, the invasion of Normandy, Operation Overlord. And Friends of the World War II Memorial, they do programs that coincide major American events during World War II. So that particular morning, we were there celebrating the Normandy invasion. Now, there was gonna be a program at 10 o'clock. There is an organization called Honor Flight, which has been bringing World War II veterans to Washington, D.C., and specifically to the World War II Memorial since 2004. And that particular morning, 10 Normandy invasions, uh, invasion veterans were going to be there. And so, as they were coming into the memorial, we were greeting them all, right? I noticed that one of them was African American. Now, let me be very clear. I appreciate and am always glad to meet all of the World War II veterans, but particularly those who look like me. And if you read the narrative, you know, one could, could walk away thinking that black folk did not participate in World War II at all. So the program went on, and at the end of the program, as they were exiting, they were coming out of the Pacific entrance, and that entrance is right next to the visitor's kiosk. So Mr. Nathaniel Johnson is coming up in his wheelchair, and I ended up greeting him again. And I asked him, I said, so, you know, what did you do in the war, sir? What did you do in Normandy? And he sort of ashamedly said, uh, yeah, I was a truck driver. I was like, truck driver what you were you were part of the red ball express well his guardian the guy who was pushing him in his wheelchair was he was white and his face lit up because he knew the story too and i'm like oh my goodness you were part of red ball express you're part of red ball express now in case you don't know about the red ball express after the troops broke out in normandy of like the last week of august or so they were on the move and so because of the bombing campaign that took place prior to the invasion, a lot of the infrastructure had been destroyed, particularly the railroads. And so they had to use truck drivers to drive the supplies 24 hours on a route that took tons and tons of equipment to the front line and brought them back. 75% of those individuals were African-American. Nathaniel Johnson was one of them. So, I mean, I was, like I said, people were walking by and I'm like saying, man, this guy right here was part of the, you know, I didn't even know these people. And I'm like, yeah, he's part of that, you know, Red Ball Express. So they ended up leaving and they were going towards the visitor's kiosk to get back on the bus. About 20 minutes later, I'm back out there too. And on Super Saturdays, we would have what we call uh, uh, Living History Meets Honor Flight. And on Super Saturdays, when we had between 500 and 700 World War II veterans, we would be out there dressed in period attire. We would have uh, reenactment groups out there. They'd be dressed out in period attire. We would have a God of Swing, which was a part of, which was a, which is um, a, a group that, that does swing dance in the area, in this, in this area. And we were playing swing music. Well, I was walking out there and uh, I noticed that there were some middle school students and these kids were dancing to swing music. And I sort of looked at them and said, oh man, that is so cool, these kids are dancing swing music, right? Then about 30 seconds later, I said, wait a minute, these kids who weren't born when swing was big are dancing to swing. And as I looked at them again, I noticed that they were in sync, which meant that somewhere at school, they were taught about swing music and how to dance swing. So I went back over to him, I said, hey kids, gather around, gather around. I said, uh, see that guy over there in the wheelchair? I know you don't know who he is or what he did, but I'm telling you, he was part of the, the Red Ball Express. You need to go over there, greet him, and we'll talk about it later. So, so the kids went over and they started greeting Mr. Johnson. Well, needless to say, Mr. Johnson started tearing up again, right? And I'm and, and this whole thing was being photographed. The last photograph that was taken Mr. Johnson is sitting in his wheelchair and the kids are sitting around him. And I tell you what it looked like. It looked like a proud grandfather who had, 
who was sitting amongst his grandchildren. And I thought about it, those kids in the picture who in 2014 were middle schoolers can grow up to be whatever they want to be. They can be as great as they want to be because every opportunity they will have and will ever have has already been paid for by those who came before them, those like Mr. Nathaniel Johnson. And I remember that picture. And uh, to them, to those kids, he was just a grandfather. But to me, I knew his struggle because I don't know if he had to deal with this personally, but for the most part, when black service personnel came back to the United States, they came down the gangplank. There was a soldier standing at the sign and when he said, whites this side, Negroes to the other. And that was the type of foolishness that a whole lot of them had to deal with. So when I see that type of thing, you know, I, I'm standing a little taller watching, watching what those young kids can be, um, realizing that we all are standing a bit taller because we're standing on the shoulders of giants. Giants like Mr. Nathaniel Johnson. Check out our website at www.jwmhistoryalive.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And if you want more films, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel at John W. McCaskill. This is John W. McCaskill, History Alive.